I'm Jane Sander. I'm at Swift Creek Mill Theater, uh, one of our wonderful venues for theater in Chesterfield County. And I'm here because I have a, a body of my work, it's an exhibition at the theater. And uh, now that it's all out, it's, it's a good time to talk about it, where I've been, where I'm going, and about my art in general. Well, my favorite medium is watercolor. I like it because it's fluid. It uh, allows you a lot of leeway in terms of happy accidents. Sometimes things will happen on the page and you go, ooh, I like that. You use that in your painting. You have to always be creative about how am I gonna use this? Where am I gonna go with this? <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, the good things and the bad thing are the same thing. This happy accidents are sometimes not when you want them. You know, you try to cover it over and it doesn't cover, and so you just let it you dry, you put it aside, and then you come back, and it's really kind of interesting because sometimes it's flexible, and then you walk back in and say, ah, there's the problem, and then you go, oh, I can save this. It's like anything, you just go, okay, you just keep going. You know, when you draw anything, the negative space is really an important factor in drawing it because you really don't look at positive space. When I say positive space, that's the object. And the negative space is the area around it or the holes or the spaces around it. A lot of times it's easier to draw the what's not there, <laughs> this edges around and to measure because your mind always tries to categorize things. So if you are painting or drawing and you use a word to describe something, people will get a image in their head about what that's supposed to look like. So like if I said dog to you, you'd have four legs, you'd have those features to it. With art, you have to stop and not say flower, you have to say form, line form, shape, color, texture, for all those arty words. <laughs> that's what you're working with, all of those things is what makes you an artist, not just how do I make it look real. I had a dream in the middle of the night, usually when you have a dream, <laughs> about water. We'd done a lot of cruising and stuff and I'd actually taken a lot of photographs of water because I realized how mesmerizing it is, a hypnotizing effect. But I looked for patterns and that again ties back to what I was looking at doing drawing the roots of the flowers or looking for the patterns in leaves and so forth. I came on the idea to just do a series of water. When you decide that, then you push yourself further. Water in what condition, what kind of water, what are the colors. I think one of the first ones was Splash. It was much harder than it looks. <laughs> it was starting out in layers of color, and what I wanted to get was the movement, the feeling of Phew! because that's kind of what I was feeling at the time. <laughs> Another one that I was real happy with was Ebb Tide. It's just churning water. Another one I really liked was Whirlpool, and that was harder because it was a different form of water. And I thought, yeah, Whirlpool does kind of make you dreamy and you get caught into it. It's relaxing. I just thought it pulled you in. Another one I really like is Stars by the Sea because it has starfish and different kinds of mosses and it's got a lot of movement in it. It interprets sea life is, is jewels. I'm interested in conservation. And I started looking at different kinds of water. So ice became another challenge and I did frozen water and uh, melting snow. When you draw water, you are drawing negative space because, you know, there's nothing there. I've done a lot of my paintings in this couple of series since I retired. I just see it as, <laughs> it's my course in self-improvement and, you know, looking back and looking forward too.